Hi everyone. Today I'll be showing you how to use the queue message handler template on lab view. So first you go to file and you create a project. And under there you can find the queue message handler template. Click on it, hit the next button. Uh, for example, let's name this uh, the project name a simple project. And let's save the project root under the simple QMH uh, project file. This folder, you can name the file name prefix is up to you. And then you hit the finish button. So when you're done, you can double click the main VI. And it will, it will open up the front panel to show you. You can hit, hit the run button. So this template will show you Whenever you hit these two buttons, the display, the string con uh, indicator will change to a different message. Uh, for example, if you hit something, it will say do something button is pressed. If you hit the something else button, they will say do something else, do something else button pressed. So with that, you can just hit the, ex the exit button, it will stop the entire program. You can see the block diagram. You can learn this entire uh, design architecture just by looking and reading at the document. But let's say uh, if you would want to add, let's say, a status indicating loop, like a brand new, like a third while loop. As you can see, there's two while loops here. So in order to add uh, uh, another, another loop, you have to first edit this edit this uh, API, it's called the create all message queues, you double click it, you open, uh, you right click the message queues cl clusters, you open the type dev, from there on you can, uh, you can expand, you can expand and call the other loop, let's say, uh, status loop once you're done apply changes and save so with that you can see on the front panel that there's two re queue reference so what would what you would do is that first you will want to create you will want to create a copy of this Sorry, it's wrong. So what you want to do is that you have to expand this first and then create create a duplicate of these two API and do the following. So since we have created uh, the uh, the status loop uh, queue reference, if you pull down this uh, bundle by name, you can see that there is two two things as inside. First is the UI and the status loop. So you can connect. You can connect this to here, like so. And you can merge the errors. There you go. So all you have to do now is just save. And that's it. You're done. You can create a second loop right now. Or should I say third loop? So it's good to it's good to name your while loops in uh, the queue 
message handler design architecture because you will get lost if you don't do it so in this case we will call it the status indicator loop so what you do is that you will pull this down which would reveal which would reveal your status loop but if you don't want to do that you can actually uh, you can actually make a duplicate of this and connect the input cluster of the unbundle unbundle API to the queue reference here to this cluster queue reference and you can change it to status loop once you are done with that you can copy this API which is called the DQ message into this loop connect it to the output of the unbundle API you can connect your case structure Uh, what you do is that you, you from the message terminal you would connect it to your case selector. So back to this API right here. So if you would name them initialize and connect them to the status loop, the first case in this status indicator loop should be called uh, initialize. So There you go, something like that. And once you are done, you can uh, you can copy this API over, which is called the NQ message handler. You can wire the message uh, the message queue reference into there, and the error in into here. Oh, sorry. And something important to take note is that you uh for every loop you need to have a you need to have a, a exit state so that um so that if we hit the uh exit button you can stop the entire uh program from running so in this case I would uh edit the false case so I would name it exit. Uh, but in this case, uh, whenever you initialize, you should uh, make it made it uh, make it into a default default case. So make this the default case. There you go. So over at the exit, you can actually copy whatever whatever you have here. Whatever you have in the message handling loop, the exit case into this into this uh case. Uh, uh, first, I would do this. I would release the message queue reference using this API. Mm -hmm. And also, I would uh, copy this API over as well. Okay, let's make uh, make these uh, wires nice and nice and clean. Uh, we can copy this uh, true constant over as well to this uh, and wire it inside here. Okay. Okay, next uh what I want to do is that I want to have 
I want to have this round LED blinking whenever we have uh whenever the uh whenever the uh program is running. So I'll use a I would use a simple property node to to do it. Change all to right, right click, create, constant, true. I will copy this property node, put it on initialize, paste it. Okay, maybe we'll put this uh, property node out, uh, right outside. It's a better choice. The reason why I want to put it outside because I can just use one property node and control whether or not to blink uh, to make the LED blink or not. Okay, there you go. Okay, and I want to keep uh and I also want to keep the the state of this loop uh looping on initialize so I would uh, I would enqueue the initialize message and it'll be dequeued right over here. So take note, I'm in I'm uh enqueuing the initialize message and dequeuing right over here. So it will keep looping the initialize uh initialize state over and over again. So when you're done you will need to you'll need to have a uh, whenever you want to stop a while loop, you have to, uh, you have to add, you have to add an NQ uh, button here under this uh, message handling loop exit case. So, uh, uh, let me show you uh, what you need to do. First thing is that you have to uh, copy this NQ uh, message uh, API here. And you have to take the similar queue reference as the status loop up here. So you have to connect it something somewhat like this. There you go. So you can see that this status uh, loop uh, queue reference is being pushed up all the way here. So what you need to do is that you have to actually uh, enqueue, enqueue a message call it exit. Whenever uh, we press the exit button, it will enqueue this. And you have to make this priority message, you have to create a, a boolean, a false uh, false constant. I mean, a true, I mean, true constant, so that you can uh, prioritize uh, this queue, uh, this queue, uh, this uh, message for this uh, status indicator loop. So you would make uh, the number of the number of loops you have Excluding the event handling loop, the you will also you will equal the same amount of uh, NQ message API in the message handling loop. Okay. So hopefully everything is running all right. Okay, maybe you put this LED in here as well. Okay, we can uh, we can run our program. So as you can see, the status indicator loop is running and at the same time I can play around with this two button and when I hit the exit button the entire program stops. Thank you for watching.